Okay, I'm sorry y'all, I killed my succulent. He's dead. Apparently, I overwatered him. Is that a thing? You can overwater a plant? I had no idea. It's really like, <laughs> it's really brutal that the remains of my succulent are still in the pot as the cactus like swallows it up. What's up everybody? My name is Tom. I'm the editor and co-founder of Your Other Brothers. We are a community navigating faith, homosexuality, and masculinity together, and now we look different. We look clean, we look spiffy, we look really cool, and I'm gonna talk all about it in this video. But first, a belated Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. So much has happened, it is happening in our midst here in the year 2020. I hope your vision is clear. I've missed doing these videos. Like the holidays were crazy and I, I had it on my calendar. I have a calendar right here. And it was on my calendar to do a manly monthly because how can we go a month without manliness? H how can we do it? We can't. But I'm here now to not only do a manly monthly but also do like a manly monthly squared <laughs> for, for the months that have gone by. Buckle in. Hitting some of the highlights from our wonderful blog over the last couple of months. One of our authors, Ben, he's a pastor. He wrote a blog post called Naked and Unashamed in the Locker Room. This is something that translates so many bounds in this community. People who have body image issues or locker room insecurities, this is a thing. It's a thing for me, it's a thing for lots of people. Check out Ben's post, um, maybe you'll resonate. Any intentional community fans out there? <laughs> Our oldest author at the moment, uh, Marshall, he wrote a post called How I'm Thriving in Intentional Community. False. That is not the name of the title. <laughs> How I've Thrived in Intentional Community. But I'm sure Marshall will be the first to tell you that he is currently, present day, thriving as well. Our most prolific author, Dean Samuels. Dean M. Samuels, he's written, he's starting a series actually, he started a series uh, end of last year, now going into 2020, um, he's talking about the fruit of the spirit in a way that I've never even thought about. You know, we've all heard the fruit of the spirit, I actually worked at a summer camp one year and there was a song for it, and you like say all the fruits of the spirit really quickly and you clap and it's um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. <laughs> I think that's it. In any case, Dean is talking about the fruit of the spirit through the lens of his sexuality, a queer man's journey for 2020. And so he's talked about love to kick off, uh, to kick off this journey. And so I'm really excited to see the insights that Dean gets, not only about the fruit of the spirit, but how that illuminates his sexuality as well, and how those two things go hand in hand. One of our newer authors, Daniel, he has his own series. We have so many series -ses going on in this community, it's ridiculous, it's so good. But Daniel, he's doing a coming out series, all these stages that he's had of coming out. And his most recent chapter in that story is coming out of the country, learning who God is. Um, and it was really cool to see a little bit more of an origin story of where this Daniel guy came from, this this Filipino guy who, who lives in London. Um, how did he get there? It's cool to, to backtrack, because I only know London version of Daniel, I don't know that that previous chapter of his life, so it was really cool to connect those dots. Our artistic brother, Eugene, he wrote a post called Why You Should Pursue Side B Community. There's a lot of angst out there sometimes, or a lot of fear, a lot of, a lot of trepidation about connecting with other people who struggle similarly or are wired similarly. similarly. Nailed it. It's a valid thing to consider. Um, I don't encourage anyone to just start jumping into side B world. When we say side B, that's Christians who experience same-sex attraction, may identify as gay or queer, but hold to that traditional ethic on sexuality. Yeah, I get it. I've, I've been there. I've been through seasons in my life where I'm just like, it's not wise. It doesn't make sense to connect with other people and to kind of live in this similarity. Like the similarity is, it could be, can be, and has been comforting for me. It's also very limiting. Because um, there's a big, whole wide church out there. A big, whole wide humanity out there. And so if we just isolate to one people group, that's supremely limiting, I think, on uh, things that we may, maybe could be learning, could be experiencing, that others could be teaching us, and vice versa, that we could be showing learning, um, learning others, to learn others. Or otherwise known as 
teaching them. But Eugene makes some good points, and I think um, on a case-by-case -case basis, you should yeah look into into community across the board, whether it's people within within quote unquote your struggle or your proclivities, and people beyond as well. And then I want to tie this last blog that I want to mention because it's one that I wrote um, with one of our recent podcasts. Um, the blog post was called "Pornography." promiscuity, praise, repeat. And it all comes down to this cycle that I have found myself in, that a lot of people out there, I'm sure, can relate with. Um, this cycle of, of going through unhealthy patterns and then coming to senses and, and repenting and standing back up again. But then as soon as you do that, it's like, okay, now the wheel's turning and now eventually I'm just gonna fall again. And it's just this never-ending cycle of doing unhealthy things, praising God, and going back to unhealthy things. And the whole point of that post for me was to learn to start to bring the praise into, into the pornography, into the promiscuity, into the unhealthy things in my life. To be praising Him as the hymn goes all the day long, including the, the low moments of life as well. And making that more of a habit, even when I don't feel like it, when I don't feel like it's the moment is worthy of praise, um, to do it. And this, go, this all connects to our most recent podcast as of this recording, which was Pornography, which was a classic episode we did. We did a bunch of episodes that are no longer available, sadly, but uh, this was one topic that we covered early on, and, and we redid it with new voices, with Jacob, with Ryan by my side. Um, it was really awesome to, to breathe new life into this topic uh, as we talked about the psychology, the physiology of pornography and what that does to the brain, what it does to the heart. And we talked about our own stories too, our experiences, um, dealing with it. We, we talk about accountability and community. There's a lot of things, a lot of topics that are intersected by this single topic. Check out Your Other Brother's podcast. If you haven't done that, please go to Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify, um, or on most podcast apps so you can search Your Other Brother's podcast and find us. Subscribe to us. We'd love your support in the form of a subscription or, or if you feel so inclined on Apple Podcasts, a rating review. It really does go a long way. As to our new design, out with the old, in with the new, right? It's 2020. I'm really excited personally for this year, for my own life, goals and ambitions, but I'm really excited for the life of Yab as well. This new design, this new layout has been in the works for <laughs> far too long. It's been, it's been a long state of transition on, on our website, but I'm really excited. I'm really excited to dive into a new look, a new feel. In essence, this logo, this design, Big shout out to the supremely talented Wesley Ayers. Y'all go check out Wesley's site. Links will be in the description below. Um, he would love your support, but he did a fantastic job on this design. I basically told Wesley, you know what? I've, in this long journey of Yab, we've been around for a few years now. Um, we've been logo-less, logo-less? <laughs> Not the um, Tolkien elf. We've been logo-less for a little while now, and um, when I was thinking about what a new logo, what a new design could look like, and pondering who we are, who we are as YOB. Three things came to mind. In addition to our topics, so we talk about faith, homosexuality, and masculinity. Those are like our main themes that we talk about. But as far as who we are, the, the bedrocks, three, three things like fairly quickly materialized for me, and that is Jesus, story, and community. We're a community passionate about Jesus. We're a community passionate about radical authenticity and storytelling, and we're a community at the soul, at the core of this. It's not me, it's not any one of the authors, it's not any one of the community members, it's all of us together sharing in this effort, um, walking this road together, because the Lord knows we cannot do it <laughs> by ourselves. Been there, done that, actually been there, can't do that. Never doing that again. We need each other, and community is a huge part of the reason Yab is still around all these years later. So I appreciate it, thank you Wesley, and thanks to all our supporters. Yob can't exist without Patreon, without you guys supporting us month after month. Um, if you're interested at all in supporting the effort, you can find that link down below as well. I'm going to go and uh, keep watering my plants in hopes that they drown a awful, wet, suffocating death. But until next time, whatever the tagline is, that's what it is. <laughs> that was the Manly Monthly, the month that was manly. Let us all have a manly month yet to be.